Happy Hotline Holidays! Holy moly, it's here! It's Hotline League episode 58. I know, I know, you've been waiting. You've been waiting ever since we did the live version in Vegas for this show to come back. And it is back. And right now, people on YouTube are like, he's so loud. But you know what? It's just because I'm excited because the show is starting. We're, wait, listen, we don't normally do this, but we have... for the Actually, I think she might be the only person to ever be here in studio. Uh, we've got twice now. Shox is on the show. Uh, here in Los Angeles in the Travis Gafford Industry Studio. Uh, we've got Mark Zimmerman. He just uh, woke up from a nap, and he's here as well. And by the way, got to say, sponsored by uh, Alienware this episode. So thank you so much to Alienware. Really appreciate it. We'll uh, talk about them more later in the uh, in the show. And by the way, if you're watching, uh, you can click a link in the description <laughs> to join the giveaway or exclamation mark giveaway in the chat to join that. Uh, without further ado, let's get into the show. I'm joined first off by my constant co-host, Mark Zimmerman. How's it going, Mark? Great. I um, received the laptop that the Alienware sponsorship sent me, and so I've been spending all day getting it up and running. And uh, it's weird. I had an Alienware before, but I have like this weird emotional attachment to it where I know like where all my files are and everything's like exactly how I want it, and like I have to break this one in. Yeah. That's not emotional attachment. That's just it. It's 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 weird. Like I, you know, I had like a, a moment where I was like, "Do I really want to set this up today, even though it's a vastly better computer?" And I, I ended up doing it. But well, I'm uh, I'm glad to do that. I'm hearing we have an echo. This is the problem with Twitch chat. They never they would literally wait until the production until the show starts to, to alert me of any production issues we're having. Wow, are you slagging off your viewers? No, I don't know I what that means. We're I'm also coming. joined right now by. Shocks. How's it going, Shocks? It's going very well. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. It's yeah. my favorite hotline leak. What does Ooh, that mean? That's a bad tweet. That's my favorite hotline leak. Um, is that what you hotline tweeted? Hotline leak is live. Is live. No, I said it's live. Okay. What are you saying, Mark? Uh, my tweet is not worded very well, but I'm not going to redo it. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Shocks, how was, how was All Stars? Because you were working All Stars all weekend. Uh, all Stars was really nice. You were there as well. Um, I was. It was one of my favorite All-Stars yet, uh, and there's been a lot, and it's like a tricky one, you know, because what is it supposed to be? Nobody freaking knows. Yeah. Um, but I definitely like the fact that there were more influencers there, and it was a lot of fun. I personally think the days were a bit too long. I don't know how it came across on stream, but like the days where we had a lot of 2v2s and regular 5v5s and a tandem and the 1v1s, it was like, okay, we're going for a while, um, which I don't know if, if the viewers feel the same, but yeah. for us, it's... It was definitely like, oh gosh, this yeah. is a, this is a very long day, um, but it was still very entertaining. Got to work with Tyler; that was cool. Um, so yeah, good stuff. Very cool. Well, I uh, yeah, I I heard that people were saying that Tyler one was coming for your job. Is that true? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. I mean, maybe uh, he was really good. Uh, I. Like, he's always in character, mm -hmm. so I don't know how exhausting that is. Probably not very for him because he's always streaming, and he's always, when I talk to him, uh, not on air, he's also kind of like that, but he's also super nice, and he was willing to learn. He was asking for feedback. Uh, it was awesome, so, yeah. Yeah, Twitch chat spamming Tyler1 emotes right now. Great. Uh, so the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about, uh, and maybe we can get some calls in <laughs> about this, is but, like, I have seen uh, in my chat before people say like people think that you're leaving league of legends because they read one headline on reddit and didn't click the link and are very confused so and they, some people were like oh she's at all stars i thought she was leaving league yeah um so what is the story are you looking there? at my hair standing up here no or that's fine or my uh, there's there's a little speck of something right in the front of your hair but it's nobody on ch chat can see it and i just glanced at it once it's like <laughs> it's like fiber do you want i can get it uh, yes was, okay here we go i'm good okay and oh Okay, I got it. Maybe snot from when I... I don't think it's snot. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I'm definitely not leaving League of Legends. I'm freelance. It just means that I can do leave Le League of Legends and I can do other things. Um, and I just wanted to because I've only been doing League for so long and I love League. But, you know, maybe I want to dip my toes in some other water. Um, and uh, to answer your question, I'll be heavily involved still with LEC, European LCS, of course. Yeah. Rebrand, uh, we had a couple of workshops already about content for next year and everything, so don't you guys worry. And I wasn't at All-Star, so I, I love League. Um, um, all right, do you know if there's any difference between our two statuses? Um, not like you need to reveal it if there is, but just like, because that's, that's probably 
was just that, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's very similar, I assume, to Mars. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know what, but, like, all I can say is that I'm completely freelance. So, as of now, I just work uh, mm-hmm. for Riot on, like, a, you know, we made a deal for All Star. I went to All Star. Um, now, I'm not connected to anything, and I can basically do whatever I want. Some things I shouldn't do in, you know... So my career would still advance, but, you know, yeah. technically I could do whatever. I can stream. Uh, I mean, they could already before, but I don't... Yeah, I think it's kind of similar, Mark. I'm you not can, sure. You can get independent sponsorships. Yeah. You can stream and get, like, donations, and it's not weird. So the whole shebang. Shox is going to ball out is what I'm hearing. Uh, by the way, Papa Smithy yeah. in the chat says, Shox leaves me like regional success left my region. What? Hi, well, Papa. Yeah. I don't know what that means. Yeah. <clears throat> have you posted I mean, a picture or go ahead no i was gonna say it's it's the same for me like i, I basically like i know I, I run things by riot to make sure that i'm not doing anything bad like i know they have the only thing i know is that i've ever been like been told no to is like gambling websites but that's fine because i don't really yeah. want to do those. i think a lot of it is like i'm not i'm looking to have a long-lasting relationship with riot as of you so uh i have enough common sense i think um as does my management but uh, if there's ever something i would definitely run it by them to be like hey is this all right um so i think it's similar yeah um uh mark Z, can you here i'm gonna type it to you i i think something's fucked up with my skype i have two skype windows open yeah maybe that's just the new skype i just muted no i think it was just really fucked <clears throat> We're working on the Mark Z Echo and the Mark Z situation. Uh, he just he had a technical switch this week, and so we haven't had a chance to to check everything I out. I blame. I think it's on your end. I'm blaming you. All right, sure. I'll take ownership of it. That's fine. Um, <laughs> as so, far as I can tell, everything is is under the right settings. Yeah. Well, I don't. I, it's weird because I don't hear the echo, so it makes it very hard for me to troubleshoot. But hopefully, uh, well, only, the only thing I was thinking was maybe I'm coming through your speakers into the microphone on OBS. But that's what I thought too. But we haven't had this issue before, so. Um, all right. Anyway, so this episode is going to be interesting. We're going to talk about All Stars. Uh, there is some roster stuff that got announced uh, in the past week, I think, and we can talk about that. Uh, you guys can call and you can ask questions about Shock's situation, what it means, why does she decide to do it. Sounds like I'm pregnant. Uh, <laughs> you can call in and ask about Shock's situation. I don't know if that's what it means at all. Um, I we did an I did an interview that's out right now with Ocelot where he talked about uh, the poaching accusations. I don't we don't really have much information there, but if somebody really feels strongly about that, they have a good take about it. That's good too. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of what else came out in the past week. Um, but I think that's mostly it. You guys might have ideas, and it's the end of the season, so we can uh, open up the lines to have a lot of different stuff uh, going on. So, um, uh, Is the uh, St. Vicious uh, thing? Oh, yeah. Saying? Oh, God. We can talk about the St. Vicious <clears throat> thing as well, yeah. All right, cool, because that was the first guy I pulled already. So. Okay, cool. Oh, you've already started pulling people. Well, before you pull any more people, hopefully you can explain how this works. Yeah, hey, I just wanted to be proactive. Oh, it's just so wholesome. Yeah. Someone's asking what's everyone's favorite LOL team. Yeah. All right, so if people have not seen the show before, the way this works is we have a Discord um, spamming it in Twitch chat right now. So you're going to want to join up on that Discord. When you get there, you need to join Pleb Calls or Pleb Calls 2. You can mute yourself once you're in there. Uh, I need you in there. So if you end up getting selected, I can pull you into another room. Once you're there, you need to type your topics, whatever it is you want to talk about, in Pleb Topics or Sub Topics if you're subbed. Um, you know, make sure you try and write your takedown. So if someone was saying, you know, What's going on with all the English broadcast streams of some of the other regions? See, feeling like they're getting downsized or something. Like, you know, do you think that's good, bad, whatever it is? If I like your topic, I'll pull you into the waiting room. Uh, Once you're there, you'll sit there until it's your turn to go on. I'll hop in the room, do a quick mic check with you to make sure that you are good to go. And then we'll pull you into the on-air room where you can directly ask Travis, Shox, and myself. One other thing that I'm going to do in the second half of the show, I'm going to tease something that is... uh going to be coming out tomorrow morning um but i think i can kind of do a little bit of leaking about it tonight um so just wait around for the second half of the show we got some cool stuff coming um looks like we've got some people coming into the waiting room by the way if you are a sub that does allow you to put your topic in the subtopic chat so that kind of helps us out well mark screen people at all or uh mark goes down there and talks to them Hmm. you were on the show previously yeah i didn't i just thought mark didn't have that much to say 
Yeah, he's um, he's a quiet guy. Spe- he's frozen. Speaking of substance, no, he's just deep in thought. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't uh, think so. Can you move? He's fro- uh, yeah. <laughs> See? <laughs> it's completely fine. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> I'm so confused, dude. Like, I just tried to switch rooms and I can still hear you guys. Okay. Wait, really? On Discord? <laughs> oh, we've got an internet connection problem going on between me and Mark, so hopefully the internet comes back just What's fine. What's a bit? If someone gives you 500 bits, is that $500? Uh, 500 bits is $5. Wow. A one bit is one penny That's if cool. you're in the U.S. That's great. Um, uh, okay, so uh, while Mark is in the other room uh, pull, pulling people, I want to shout out to uh, Fly Twist for six months, USS Bob Saget, Pinky24, I'm Elvis4 for 10 months, Gaffer Gang here to support Simmers with his mic issue, Pilgrim Panda for four months, Sport CTC for 11, almost a year. Yeah, coming wow. up on a year. And uh, Duanasaur, who resubbed with a tier two sub. Thank you for the tier two sub. Really appreciate it. Three months in a row. So if you resub, right? Like, I'm just subbed to some people, and it just automatically, like, keeps subbing. But yeah. they have messages. With Twitch Prime, you have to resub. I'm a plub. Pub. Yeah. Yes. I'm a well, plub. I don't also, have Twitch Prime. As long as you're subbed to someone, like you can choose when they see it. So like it might have already charged you, but you can press like the you know like I'm yeah. subbed again kind of button. You go to their channel after it's charged you again, and you can, it'll say like alert and put in a I'm message. I'm such a or newbie. It's okay. You're gonna learn a lot. It's gonna be great. Uh, thank you for the thousand bits, Shabits eighty one. See, that's ten dollars. I was doing the calculations, well, but I, I couldn't quite get there. Yeah, so exactly. Glad you told me. Yes, yeah, shocks will be streaming. We'll talk about that later on the show. We do have a person here though, so. <laughs> yeah. Thank, welcome to the show again, Tom Shu. I remember you. Oh, yeah. I was the last guy from the uh, previous show. So uh, how you doing? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being a Twitch sub as Cute well, by icon. the way. Um, what? Where are you calling from? Remind me. Uh, Hampton Roads, Virginia. Hampton Roads, Virginia. Okay. Hampton Road. Here we go. <laughs> West Virginia. Are you, trying to sing, are you trying to sing country roads? <laughs> no. Yeah, take me home. Hampton Roads. Close enough. Tom Shu, uh, what do you want to talk about on the show today? Okay, um, I was a little surprised that uh, I got pulled on first, but uh, I did want to talk about the uh, St. Vicious situation and uh, some of the things that we can learn from it. So, yeah. um, if I was surprised you got pu- pulled first with this topic too, but Mark decided was, to start the show. It was literally show. the first topic I saw. That's yeah. it. Like he, if you look at subtopics, it's still the most. There's one before him, which yeah, was talking uh, about the the event numbers. <laughs> Yeah, like, normally I would, I would, I would suggest we save this, you know, for the middle yeah, of the show. Yeah, you want to save this for a little bit later? Cause no, 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 no. Tom, shoot, we're in, that? and and Lokodoko just hosted us with 169 <laughs> viewers. Of course, it would end with 69 if it's from Lokodoko. But uh, we let's talk. Let's talk about this. We so, try to run away from this, Travis. Is that what it is? Get into the <laughs> talk about Tom, shoot. Give show. me your topic. All right. Okay. Let's do it then. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about the uh, the whole Saint Vicious fiasco. For uh, anyone who doesn't know, that um, St. Vicious uh, when I was uh, streaming a couple weeks ago, and he went on this trip stream uh, talking about uh, depression and how he felt that some like depression was sort of like, like more of like a made-up disease, and that people who have the disease can just get over it and stop being little uh, B-words, if you know what I mean. Um, I, well, I'm not definitely not condoning what St. Vicious has to say, but... I feel like I understand what he's, where he's coming from. Like as a person who comes from a military background, like both my family, both my parents were in the military, then I sort of understand that the view, of course, you know, St. Vicious actually served in the Navy, I believe it was. Yeah? Yeah. Was the Navy? Yeah, he served in the Navy for a couple years. And the, um, yeah, the military sort of has a very regressive view on mental health and dealing with depression and things like that and it's been there for a couple it's been like that way for like the past 20 years or so but and so i understand like where he may get that like sort of viewpoint but you know that kind of thinking can be very dangerous especially when it comes to dealing with like the mental health of your players and especially when you consider like these are five people five like young socially like possibly socially awkward teenagers that you're pulling away from their parents across the world and pulling them all in Los Angeles in front of bright lights and you're expecting them to practice high pressure environments and things like that and it can be really tough on your mental and if you're doing like if you're if you're just saying like an illness is made up 
like like Saint Vicious is saying, it can really have really lead someone down a very dangerous dark path. And I wanted to get some of your opinions on like what's going on with Saint. And uh, do you think if there's anything that we can learn about this going forward? I mean, one thing I want to say is that I I don't come from a military background, and I don't know what any of that is like. But I would think that someone in a profession who has struggled historically with PTSD not being recognized as something that was really a thing and people didn't really know when it first occurred and shell shocked after World War One, like what it was and stuff and in, in a profession that deals with a lot of these factors I actually found it more mind-boggling that he said that um, I was just really taken aback I know Saint um, is usually like he he just you know says what's in his head um, but I just thought that was really really a wrong take and um, I think you can say like I don't know about the topic and in my opinion X or Y but just phrasing it the way he did in connection with the fact that he is um, as said responsible for young kids or like kids or, or you know growing adults who, who may go through these things is just yeah it's very unbecoming yeah yeah Go ahead, Mark. Oh, you want to go, Travis? No, no, go I for it. I have a longer take. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, because I mean, you've done the coaching stuff before, and I think you've worked with Saint, right? So, yeah, and I think for people who don't know Saint, like he can be prone to hyperbole. Um, so, like, you know, who knows if these were his, like, if you sat him down and were like, "Tell me exactly what you think," versus like, "I'm streaming and this is off the cuff" kind of thing. So, I don't want to, you know, try and say what I think he was saying. Um, but yeah, obviously, it's real and it's a disease and all that stuff. Um, but I think. I have, I have two different thoughts on it. Like one, what he, one of the things he said that I think probably resonates with more people than anyone's ever going to admit, which is like, he said at some point he was depressed or something. I, I think he clarified in a, a, a Reddit comment as well. He said like, and he like, you know, made the adjustments in his life to try and get out of it, which is I think something that at some point in their life, a lot of people will hit like a very major slump, whether or not it's clinically diagnosed as depression or not. And then like, if someone makes their own, steps to turn their life around and fix that problem that slump it's very easy to fall into a mindset of like this is what i did to get out of my slump and then you try and to apply it to people who like are in a different situation but yeah. you don't you don't understand it's a different situation so like i think a lot of people like myself included have gone through like a pretty rough period of time uh from like a mental perspective and then a lot a lot of people were like you know what i'm gonna quote unquote man up and i'm gonna go fix my problems and make a concerted effort on, on improving things and like when you are successful at that you try and tell people to do the same thing and i think that's like even though saying it's not real is what he said that's crazy to me i i think a lot more people can fall into the trap of thinking like i got over this through this like this way why can't other people and i think that's that's something i, I can kind of understand what he was saying but like yeah. don't you know don't agree with his his like takeaway from it but like i think that's something that does happen to a lot of people yeah i mean yeah, I, think I think it opens up an interesting <clears throat> conversation uh at this time in the league community especially because like some of the players i've talked about how they've had uh, issues before and like being a pro being a streamer um a lot of this stuff can be very ironically isolating like um, I did an interview with Pokimane around this time last year, and then also we, she talked about it, I think, a little bit in the, the interview I did with her halfway through the year, um, just about how, like, sort of streaming alone can be like that. Uh, pro players, they, like, move sometimes to different countries to be a part of the stuff, so, um, I mean, you know, it's unfortunate what his comments were, but I, I think it's been really cool to see, like, let's put it this way. Cool. this The league community, at times comes out all over the place on uh, issues. on issues like this stuff. Mm -hmm. And what I saw in the response where everyone was like, uh, what is it, like, this ain't it, dog, or whatever. But did the... you need that to realize that, that he just, that was awful? No, right? No, this no, no. is one of those. No. But I just mean, like, it's, it's I am I am impressed that the community had a pretty mature reaction to it and a pretty, like, united reaction to it, uh, which I think is refreshing to see yeah and also the fact yeah. that the void boy thing happened right before like yeah, yeah, yeah. it was yeah yeah and, and one thing i'll say too is like i think a lot of people don't understand depression and like when you come from this like man up background that he supposedly came from it's like it doesn't apply but a lot of people don't like i don't understand depression and like i 
lit like my best friend and girlfriend both suffer from it and so like i have more access to like the day-to-day -day of what that's like and there's like different kinds it manifests itself in different ways and like if you don't have that like level of exposure you're probably not like i still don't get it if i'm being honest like yeah i mean it goes back to a fundamental thing which yeah. i think maybe satan puts his foot in his mouth quite often um and i don't think anyone should excuse it with you know, coming from X or Y background or whatnot, I just, and and also to give him credit, um, his apology seemed really heartfelt. Yeah. And I also do believe in giving people second chances. And I hope, you know, in a way with this, he's going to go back and be like, all right, you know what, I have to read up on this. And many other people will as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, that's, go ahead, Mark. That was the other thing I was going to touch on is like the fly quest response to it. Like, obviously yeah. what he said was fucking yeah. wrong. Everyone agreed. Um, and he was getting blasted already by the internet and the community. Do you I think that was too much by FlyQuest? I, so there's, there's two outs I'll give FlyQuest because I, I don't know what happened. On the one hand, maybe Saint legitimately resigned on his own because that's what it said, resigned. Everyone who's ever been in the business world knows that like you're given the opportunity to resign before you get fired more often than not. So you don't say, have to say you got fired or something. Um, but maybe maybe he really did resign second maybe FlyQuest did approach him and they were like bro what the fuck was this all about and he like doubled down to them behind the scenes and that's when they let him go but if their response to this was just to instantly like within a day fire him i think that's the wrong approach and i don't know dude like I, I, within a day and like everything everything should be talked about but um it, it is that i mean we in the not so near past we did also have issues about you know, conduct in, in houses and stuff and, and management and whatever. It's just so important uh, that that's a healthy environment. But if it went from, okay, we saw this clip, he's fired, then, of course, I also don't agree with it. But Right, but, like, I think, you know, they, they've worked with him for a year. Yeah. If they had problems, it was the off-season. They could have split from him before. It's it from, from what I can tell, they were plenty happy with Saints' involvement with the organization prior to that. Mm. And... I think what he said was really stupid. I'm not I'm not going to defend that, but like you had an opportunity as an organization to do something like actually really positive. You could have suspended him for a little bit and made him go to courses that explained it to him or something. And like you could have, I think, hmm. you know, it's a business and you can run it however you want at the end of the day. But if I don't, I don't, I don't look at their decision and go like, what? Yeah. A great to be clear, you I, don't know if it was their decision, also, right? Like we don't. Right. Know. Exactly. Like I don't yeah. know, but like assuming assuming FlyQuest had some say in how they wanted to handle this, I don't think cutting someone for what's going to end up being a, a minor, somewhat major PR problem is is a good decision in the long term because like yeah, he was ignorant and what he said was stupid. Yeah, but like, Mark, to them, it's not hopefully not just a PR problem. It is also anyone who's a fan and who deals with this issues like you're doing them a huge disservice also but i, well, I also why. follow your reasoning that then they should educate him also on the topic it's more right, about like, like setting a precedent yeah well i think i think that's a weird precedent to set for someone in this like who speaks for a living you know like i don't know what i'm ignorant about and like i don't ever want to be ignorant about anything to that level but like it's the kind of thing where you're not informing more people by doing it this way right like you're not taking his fuck up a negative thing and turning it into a positive you're washing your hands of it realistically mm -hmm. right like you're not i i would i would say like i would be really impressed with FlyQuest as an organization if they suspended him for a little bit and said like the only way you're getting your job back is if you agree to do these courses and then like hopefully in the future he really does learn and then in the future he can talk about it and you can make a negative experience into a positive versus just saying like, ah, we don't want to deal with this. In a, okay. Fucked up. Yes. One theoretical scenario, since we are just, it's all like nothing is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We don't, we don't know what that really yeah, is. One theoretical scenario is that what if there's someone in that team right now who's dealing with severe mental issues and all of a sudden you realize this person that has been interacting with them for a year holds these views and could have done some damage. Like there's a lot of, yeah. Yeah. And I think totally fair. Um, I don't know. All I know is like from what I heard about the team, the FlyQuest team environment, I heard they had the best team environment of any team all year long. And that's why they were able to, for the most part, by most analysts' expectations, outperform their talent level. Um, and so like maybe this was going on behind the scenes, but everything I've heard about FlyQuest was it was actually a great environment. Um, I, uh, my, my perspective, at least uh, uh, on, like if I put myself in the shoes of FlyQuest, 
Uh, here's what I think. FlyQuest is a brand that hasn't really established itself in the league space despite two years. If it's the off season, I'm thinking, okay, what do teams or what do fans think of us? Like we've been around for two years. We're going into next year. What is our brand? What does it look like, etc.? We want to establish fans. And I think that holding on to Saint after a situation like this is uh, risky. And that, like, are you? Do you want to be known what as the fans brand? What are you that, gonna lose? What's that? What fans are you gonna lose? Like, I well, so yeah, I just mean like, but... if 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 everyone doesn't really have much of a like, what do you think of when you think of FlyQuest? Like, I it's for me, it's Sneakers. like a white slate. Like, I don't think they've established themselves yet as a brand. And so if one of the few things on that white slate is like a, a pretty big black mark of like this dude that said this thing and then is still at the organization, I feel like that's a risky maneuver. I, I agree. I'm not saying it's not. I'm saying like I understand as a business why you just want to be done with it. Yeah. But I also think as a brand that doesn't have fans and doesn't have an identity and who oftentimes preaches like family and brotherhood and all this stuff, if you've ever like seen how they talk about things like – I think it would have been really cool if they, I mean, maybe they did try this route, you know, who knows, but like, yeah, we don't know. So maybe we I, should I not, think, yeah. yeah. Yeah, maybe not. But I think just, it seemed very reactionary given that it was a day later, but who knows? Um, yeah. Tom, yeah. what do you, uh, you want to give us like a final thought on the topic? Yeah. I mean, that's true. It's like, all you can do is speculate, but I think the important thing to take away is that like every, everybody is different and like what, what may work, what may like solve a problem or depression from one person may not work for another. And I just want one more short follow-up question. Do you think, um, St. Vicious will actually be able to get, like, get another job in LCS after this whole thing blows over? Hmm. For, yeah, I um, know. I would think so. Yeah. I don't know for sure, but like, Given how many things have gone wrong for different people at different points in esports, and they still get jobs, you know, I don't. I may, maybe this one's more severe, but I don't know. I, I would think not. Are you sure? I don't, no, I'm no, not. Don't I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I have mean. no idea, but I just know that like plenty of times people have gotten into problems, and yeah, Honestly, I, I think his think I think his like reaction a was apology, and he'd yeah. be able to get the job back. But I think his reaction was respectable enough and gave him a good enough like like the community seemed to accept his reaction and thought it was pretty good so i would imagine there are certain teams that would not hire him for instance golden guardians who have made who have cut coaches before uh because of uh outside issues or uh i think team liquid who is like the type of team who feels pretty strongly on presenting like a a strong face on like diversity inclusion issues and social issues uh, but there are probably some other orgs out there that I think might not feel as strong, like might feel like his apology was sufficient. So I feel like out of the other nine orgs outside of FlyQuest, there's a chance for him to get picked up. I just want to throw in one more thing about the going back more to the depression thing. Someone in chat mentioned that like there's a difference between clinical depression and like an emotional thing, uh, which I think is important to note that just like if anyone watching right now doesn't, you know, like kind of get the difference between the two, I think it's it's important to note because like, that kind of emotional depression that you hear about and it's actually what culture talks more about i think it's portrayed in movies and in in life in books and stuff is like oh i got dumped i got fired a, a close loved one died and you go into like an emotional depressive state versus like the clinical depression and i'm not a doctor so like you know please don't don't hold me exactly to this but like the, the people in my life have, have clinical depression is like it's not a specific cause it's not a slump or a period of time it's like a lifelong chemical imbalance or something in the brain and it like you know it's 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 vastly different and i think people don't hear about that real clinical depression nearly as much as what they see but, about like other things and i think it's just to take a moment to educate people like it's super super different from yeah, what i understand I, I would just be careful because like i also think no mental problems should be swept under the rug regardless no. and if you have yeah if you're emotionally depressed and you just you fucking can't deal you, that should also be dealt with but yeah as you say i think we probably all need to read up on the topic i mean i you know i suffer from insomnia i have for my entire life that stuff sometimes drives me crazy like i want to scratch open the walls and my brain because i feel so bad and stuff like that and i actually feel like i'm going crazy so there's a lot of things to deal with and a lot of things we don't understand because it's your brain at the end of the day and like and it's it's yourself and everyone's different so yeah yeah yeah, I mean, like, my girlfriend has it, and just, like, for no reason, 
you know, just has a bad, like her brain just decides it's going to be a bad day. And it's, yeah. it's, it's not like a trigger. It's not anything. It's just like, this is a, just a, a chemical thing. I, I have no idea. It's just crazy. And, and hey. I think people don't, don't understand it because it gets simplified or poorly <laughs> explained or in stuff like this. Yeah. You know. Thanks, uh, Tom. Any final thoughts on the way out? Uh, yeah. Again, I'm sorry for coming on and doing this so early. I mean, I figured this was like a really important personal topic that might have been better for better for later in the show. But I'm glad that we went ahead and discussed it anyway, because I think a lot of people can uh, get a lot of good for it. And uh, remember to support your uh, NA mid laners, Demonte, Golden Glue, all of them. One life equals one NA mid laner. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> have a good one. All right. Have a great one, guys. Bye. Yeah, you too. All right, Mark is going to go grab Whew. the next caller. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Fred the Free, for 100 bits. Uh, Lokodoko, who hosted for 169. Uh, Crynopsa, four months. Uh, Callie Me Proto, for nine months. Oh, yeah, by the way, we do want to talk about the uh, ri the League of Legends view viewership stuff. Mark, have you, have we, do we have anybody in queue for League of Legends viewership numbers yeah, that got released we today? Do. Do, you want, do you want them to go first? No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. I just wanted to make sure that um, we thought, because I didn't mention that at the beginning of the show, so. Um, Let's see, we got Elophis. Is that how you say your name? I honestly don't know, so that works. You don't know how to say your name. Are you on someone I, else's account? No, I I, may, I got this name out of a random name generator in World of Warcraft a while back, and it kind of just stuck, so I couldn't tell you how to pronounce it. Well, I am telling you how to pronounce it. It's Elophis. Uh, yeah, that sounds good to me. Thank you, Elophis. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon. Okay, well, welcome to the show. Um, <laughs> Pretty much shocks. That's uh, that's very accurate. What uh, what do you want to talk about on the show today? So I uh, kind of stole a topic from Mick Chicken, but I got some some stuff to add on to it. He wanted to talk about how the uh, English streams of the LCK and the LPL are slowly getting downsized um, due to just about everyone leaving them. People like Ruskaran, who's going to the LEC, um, and he wanted to talk about how that kind of affects the streams and whether it's worth riot looking into getting more talent to keep these streams going is this but there's a, so there's two there's like the difference between those like people leaving and then there's the others that are getting well i think maybe he's suggesting they're in dire they look like they're potentially in mm. dire straits like what is the future of the lpl yeah. and lec broad yeah, yeah, sorry that's, that's uh, the L big thing because especially on the lpl you know like two of the seven english people that were there are left and everyone else has left and gone to different games or different regions and you know they don't really have an identity right now because they just lost all of their casters and is it worth you know rebuilding this up for the few people that can tune into lpl and LP lck given like the weird times they're at at least for us people in the states. Uh, I think it's different because, like, I for LCK, I don't really follow you because I think LCK is doing still really, really good. Uh, I mean, I don't know. It's a really good time zone for me, so I always get to tune in and I see a lot of people interacting and tuning in. But they are also in need of talent, um, and I'm starting to think, like, okay, so in the back end European LCS wise, we always have open applications for casters and stuff. And it's weird because there are a lot of people, but somehow we don't like the right people don't end up on the broadcast very often. I don't know why that's such a like, what's that called? A bottleneck situation because there's definitely a lot of people that want to cast, right? Um, but there's a difference between that and the people who end up there. I think for LPL specifically, um, I mean, I don't know, but that's like anything that's like if it's LCK or LPL, so in China or in uh, Korea, that is very far away from home for a lot of people and very different cultures. So I don't know if that is working into it, if maybe, you know, it's not that appealing for people. It would be for me. I I'd love to live over there, for instance, but I could understand that that's a China? factor. What? China or Korea? Um, well, both given like the right setup, but... Um, yeah, like a gas mask to breathe oxygen. You live uh, in LA. <laughs> I know I should. Glass and stone houses or, or whatever stone yes. glass houses. Yeah, don't throw glass in stone houses because you'll step It'll on it and cut your foot. It'll shatter and reflect on your face. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Great analogy, Mark. This is why. Thanks. This is why. Yeah. All right. Anyway, um, I actually kind of. I mean, I feel like they should just use LPL as like a uh, area to sort of grow talent. Like, yeah. I think. Like there's there's not a great way to enter LCK or sorry, LEC, 
or NALCS right now. Like there's not a really great direct path. And so I think having people start on a broadcast that is a little smaller, uh, but still has some like veterans like a Raz or a Papa Smithy, like to kind of help you. I think that's actually kind of a cool thing. And, and that way you don't need to necessarily worry as much about uh, what the viewership is and the return is and all that stuff. I mean, you probably still should, but it's not the end of the world if uh, if they're on a, a show that has a little less I'd, I'd also don't understand why not more people watch the LPL broadcast. I mean, okay, so there's a the lot of delays thing, always. And it's not... for us in the States, Shocks, is just that the, the LPL and the LCK broadcast, which happen at the same time, um, for me, I'm on Pacific time. It's like 3 a.m. Yeah. for us. So it's, it's definitely a lot easier for you in Europe to catch those. Well, yeah, I, I also say. wanted to to ask Travis. So I don't know if it was Travis or Shocks who, but you um, talked about the L, uh, LPL being a good place to kind of raise casters up um, and maybe get them LCS ready. How do you think the logistics of that would work? Being able to, you know, convince someone to move to another country. <laughs> Sorry, to, I wasn't laughing at you. It's, it's all good. You know, convincing someone to move across, you know, across the seas to another country, to try to learn how to cast with, you know, the potential of maybe being able to make it to one of these big regions that both have a very big, very diverse group of casters. You know, how would that how would that work out? <clears throat> well, I also so when it comes to rising up in League of Legends to get to like the worlds and stuff, it's become very very difficult. I think for for other casters, like because there's such a big part of eight tier casters that are really good at what they do and have been there for so long. It seems incredibly daunting for me. Um, I mean, it happens, right? Look at Captain Flowers. But I feel like he was kind of a unicorn and he was like at the right place at the right time, you know, also in NA and stuff and like that all happened. But I think that's very, very difficult uh, for anyone at this point to like go all the way from the bottom all the way to the top. Yeah. But I don't know what you guys think. Mark? I have a couple different thoughts. One, like it's got to cost more actually to put someone in the LPL for riot than it is to put them in, in north america or eu right yeah. like are you sure of, i don't know i'm that's well, what i was thinking but like you got no, like, to... of visas and stuff right yeah like it, visas it, and legal and everything right like it and housing helping them with everything in their lives because they don't speak the language right like that's what i was gonna say is like you might want to grow casters there but like usually what's nice about d leagues and sports is that you get to save money while like hopefully growing these people and stuff but like I don't even know if it actually like it might be just more expensive than having them sit around the office in, in EU and try and take reps behind other people. Like that's that's where I think should the broadcast I mean, be run out of like EU? Honestly, I don't fucking know, but like it doesn't sound if, like the worst idea to me. Yeah, I, I, it's. I don't know how terrible. that works with like firewalls and stuff i don't know if that's an issue at all I don't but think that's an issue. Yeah. yeah i mean we're not super informed on this but but as far as i can tell like there's a personal cost of like all right give up everything you ever know in your life to move to china to like pursue this dream and then there's the riot cost as well and i don't know how many people like the venn diagram aligns that that makes sense you know so maybe that's why there's it, it feels like it's hard to find people to do that yeah um I don't know. I mean, I think it's just interesting. I I think that the future of LCK is a little bit more bright than the LPL broadcast because I don't know. I feel like I feel like it's this weird thing where Riot has tried to give production value to the LPL broadcast, but hasn't really supported it that much. And everybody they spent a lot of time talking about like Faker and Korea wins worlds all the time and all that stuff. Maybe we'll see viewership go up now that LPLs win worlds, but I just. I worry that that stream is not, it, it doesn't get the viewership or the promotion that it needs to justify having somebody over there. So it's, yeah. I kind of feel like you should just like, it might not be that bad to have somebody like just put people in Europe and then cast from there. I actually kind of like that idea, but I don't like, obviously know that there is the fact of the proximity to also kind of, because isn't. Actually, it would only make it easier because they're traveling a lot with the new stadiums for the teams and stuff anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just also think that there there is oversaturation, right, at this point. Like, yeah. in, in the regular season, uh, as with, like, leagues rise, but all the rest as well, you know. Yeah. In, in any given week, you're like, all right, so now I'm watching 
uh, you know, Overwatch League. I'm watching NALCS because I'm no, from no NA. No one's watching Overwatch League. I watch, <laughs> I watch a bit of LEC. I definitely want to catch that SKT game. Um, there's this Fortnite Pro I'm on. Like, it's exhausting yeah. nowadays. So, unfortunately, some things fall. And I don't have the answer as to why that's LPL because they're world champions. They have some of the most exciting players in the world, some exciting stories and fandom around everything. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. The other thing, I, I like, while the Twitch viewership is not good um i wonder how it is like they, they they broadcast english streams on other stuff too right like i think i read in one of the reddit threads that like the chinese stream of the english stream i don't really know how to say yeah it. like the, uh actually is somewhat popular for people who are like trying to learn english or yeah. something oh yeah and frost Curran is like a superstar because of, because of that they're really that's like you know she's their girl and stuff so yeah i right. can't so be just by be. the english stream yeah, we must. We, we're probably pretty biased against our opinion of, of it, just because we see like, oh, 10k viewers on average for LPL, that can't be worth it. But like, who knows what's what's actually happening over there? Yeah. Elofis, uh, any final thoughts on the way out? Sorry, we just need to to move along a little bit. Yeah, I, I just had one other quick thing I wanted to um, bring up that uh, did not see at all in the topic room, and that was just talking about how Riot has started um, shutting down some of the licensed uh, licensed broadcasts in languages other than English in the LEC, such as the uh, Hungarian broadcast. We saw a, um, an article on a Hungarian esports site about how a lot of these smaller countries that um, were doing their own licensed broadcasts were getting their, their broadcasts shut down by Riot and how a lot of fans are not going to be able to get to see their teams anymore simply because they don't understand the language that the LEC is going to be broadcasted in. Yeah, I'd, uh, let's handle this really quickly because we do, we've do. we only had two callers in the first hour. Yeah, but no, absolutely. It's okay. I mean, uh, I don't know enough about the topic to speak to it. I don't know, Shox, if you Me know neither. anything. Me uh... neither. And it's also rumored. It's not. I don't think we actually have like the full story out yet. Um, Mark, yeah, there, there could a be a quality control thing. But... Anything, anything official, though. Yeah. I, don't know, I, think, I think we'll just have to wait a little bit on that one because we could speculate a ton on it, but... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it might be that they're planning on bringing that stuff in-house. It might mean that people weren't really watching it. It might, like, I've, I've heard stories of casters on some of these off-language broadcasts doing some pretty offensive stuff. So I don't I don't know the situation. But anyway, thank you so much, Elofis. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, Hi. Thanks. Papa yeah. Smithy is in the chat right now. Uh, Papa Smithy, you said, what did you miss? Well, we decided to shut down your broadcast, unfortunately. So, um, so unfortunately, you won't be... Uh, Travis Gab first industry has bought in the L LCK broadcast. Right. So yes, yeah, and exactly. he's running it out of his studio from now on. Yeah. Tyler one will be, be casting. I hope. Um, I actually hope Pop gets some more days off this year. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Um, all right. Before we move on, I want to take a quick break here. Uh, Mark expertly knew that this was coming. Talk about our sponsor. Do you need to go, go order Postmates? Yeah, I would okay. like some food. She's gonna order Postmates, but. Um, Can I order Chipotle? Uh, you, I mean, is that how you say that? Chipotle. Um, no. You can. Uh, we're, I'm doing an ad right now. Um, go, go, go. Talk to Sam. Okay. <sighs> I'm sorry, guys. Do you ever get that that problem where you just you want to talk about a brand you're so passionate about, you love so much, and then somebody's trying to interrupt you uh, when you're just trying to talk about how much they do for you? Well, let me talk to you about it. Um, can you close the door? Me? Yeah. He doesn't know how to. He doesn't know how to order Postmates? No. He says he never does it. Is that a lie? That, that's probably a lie. Fucking Kobe. I mean, I guess I've ordered, like, for us before. Okay, one, one second on this broadcast, or this ad, guys. Sorry, Alienware. Yeah, she, she's a, she, you deserved, uh, they deserve an apology. Does okay. Do you just want Chipotle? No, no. Can I look at the options? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Oh my God, America! Okay. So many options. I, you need. I yeah. need you to. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, this is an ad. I wouldn't interrupt you when you're throwing to the State Farm analyst. Taco desk. Tuesday. I, okay. I, I feel like we would. Uh, you want to clip this whole thing for Alienware? Yeah. Not, not this part. So let's. Far. Let's. No, uh, here, we're gonna restart. Okay, we're gonna take the logo away. Hey guys, really want to talk to you about our sponsor for this show. Uh, they are Alienware. I'm looking at an Alienware monitor right now. It's so great. Mark is using his new Alienware computer. Uh, there is back here. This is where uh, Broden can sit when he visits. I know you can't really see the Aurora right now because it's Aurora because it's blocked by 
a Christmas tree. But just know that there's a ton of Alienware stuff over here. Maybe can, there we go. I touched it and the keyboard and mouse lit up. Uh, they do a ton of stuff uh, to support us. Uh, they sent us to All Stars. Uh, they uh, sponsor my LCS coverage. There's a ton of stuff that's coming out. Uh, and they've committed for the full 2019 year. Um, so I want to thank them so much. Uh, we are doing a giveaway. If you do exclamation mark giveaway in the chat, you will see a link. If you are watching the YouTube video, you can see it in the description. If you're listening to the podcast, please go to YouTube or uh, my Twitch channel and do that out. You can win. We're giving away, this is a true story, we're giving away a laptop. The same laptop, the same notebook that uh, Broad and I use to, uh, to on the road we were using at All Stars. It's a new M15. It's really easy to carry. It's great. Uh, we also have a monitor there, 240 hertz refresh rate monitor. Uh, as well as a backpack so you can win that if you enter the giveaway by the way it's super helpful for me because that just kind of shows like hey people are engaging um and so that stuff is really helpful even even if you know maybe maybe you're like i don't i already have 500 alienware products i don't need another you know just go enter the giveaway you don't you maybe you can give it to somebody uh but it's helpful for me thank you so much to alienware for supporting us uh mark is really happy right now with his alienware computer even though he looks like he's grouchy um oh you've he's muted himself so we can't hear him but trust me it's not it's his fault not the I'm computers unmuted. <laughs> i love my alienware 4k screen where i can sit all the way back like here and be able to read the uh the topics as i look to pull people thank yeah. god for the 4k resolution yeah uh either way thank you uh to alienware and thanks for uh for folks who are putting the link or getting that link in the channel Let's see. Let's see how many we've gained. Has have we broken 30k yet? Uh, no, we're at 28k. So get some more people in there for, for voting. It's it's gonna be great uh, for for registering for the giveaway. That'll be great. All right, let's talk a little bit. Let's move on to the next caller. Uh, Mark is gonna go grab them while Shox is figuring. Oh, what? Okay. She, she's getting the Postmates stuff right now. Um, uh, da, da, da. It's not just the U.S. Actually, cabs two. Um, couple of shout outs really quickly to the subs, uh, call Cali me proto, uh, for nine months, Robert Bruce for the sub, uh, one cupid for the Twitch prime, uh, the Fritz for Twitch prime, Anthony six, one, nine, only one, four months in a row. Hello everyone. Especially shocks for making a hotline leak 300% more pretty, uh, Kiwi mullet boy for 13 months over a year. We hit that 13 month mark. Dr. Manhattan sent 200 bits, Mars dogs for four. CB Moss 422 uh, with Twitch Prime and Trace B two months. Shocks keep kicking ass in this male dominated industry. You're honestly so good at what you do. Well, I agree she's so good at what she's she does normally, but she's not great at being in this room right now to hear your shout out. So I apologize to you. Uh, we do have Ca uh, Call Me Proto, who I just shouted out. Thank you, Call Me Proto, for the sub. No problem. Happy to do it. Yeah. Where are you calling from? I'm from Santa Clarita, California. Santa Clarita. Okay. It's not, that's not too far from here, right? Yeah, it's about 45 minutes away, uh, 30 minutes without traffic, maybe. Okay, cool. Uh, well, what do you want to talk about on the show tonight? Uh, well, I wanted to talk about the viewership numbers that just got released today and some of the information that's missing and some of the really good stats that we got from this year. Okay, so some of the information that's missing. So I, I got a press release, and I, so I haven't really seen them with a page that they put out. I'm going to try and pull that up on screen right now, but um well what is your what's your take well i think it's weird that the prize pool did not go up versus the 2016 prize pool um yeah. it went up from la compared to last year but there's been a lot more streams of re revenue because of the what they did this year for the kha'zix and the the championship pass but they didn't even like a lot of people didn't buy it i guess um because that should have been a bigger boost compared to just the team icons that were in 2016. Uh, I thought that was weird. Also, total hours watched is missing, along with uh, no semifinal viewership numbers from 2017. Um, interesting. The other thing is the other the other events they mentioned, like All Stars. Uh, there's no viewership information there except just participation and some of the results well they definitely don't have time for all like for all stars yeah. yeah yeah like they couldn't have released that information in time anyway um and for rift rivals it was also regionalized i assume that they didn't care about 
trying to explain Rift Rivals. Yeah, that becomes a huge cluster, maybe. Mm, um, overall, World's viewership is way up, though, right? It's way up. It went from... Well, this could be for because they had a Chinese team in the Right, final. almost certainly it is. Right. Um, last year, it was just two Korean teams in China, but this one was a Chinese team versus a European team. So it went up 40 million um, viewers, 42 ish from 57. it went up 42 yes what damn that's crazy i don't really uh yeah in 2017 it was 57 million point six and this year it was 99.6 million unique viewers unique, for yeah. finals uh f- for the for the peak concurrent it was 44 million peak in 2018 versus 14.7 peak in 2016 there's no information from 2017 on what the peak viewership was. And are you seeing uh, the price pool went down? Because I'm seeing a on the site like a, basically a 6.4 million price pool. That was lower yeah. than 2016, you said? In 2016, it was 6.7 million. Oh, interesting. According to their infographic that they release. Yeah. Um, I can put that up in the Discord in the sub. Thank you. Should... Yeah, no problem. Um, I just thought that was kind of weird because they did so much more for like the Kha'Zix skins and World Championship season pass. Yeah, I don't know why that, I mean, other than maybe just less players or a smaller player base, why, like, it, it feels weird that this year you'd have, well, the only other thing is, like, if I don't play Kha'Zix or Kha'Zix, then, like, <laughs> I don't, Shocks, you're off screen right now. Oh. Um, I don't necessarily want to... Uh, buy the Kha'Zix skin like that was I've bought in the past like icons and stuff like that but I haven't bought I didn't buy Kha'Zix this year because I never play Kha'Zix so do you think that that's a factor uh, I mean it could be a factor but I th- I think the fact that it was by team and so many people more people were involved in watching the world championship I thought it would have been a bigger do you um do you think it's... Riot should make the price pool higher themselves uh, no, but I think it'd be important for players to know where the revenue stream, like how it's divided up. They showed mm-hmm. some of this in 2016. Someone in Twitch coming. chat said the team Kazakhs and Icons went straight to respective teams and not the total prize pool. Oh, see, that's that would another, uh, make that's a ton of sense. Information. So then people are just buying the Icons, and that's the thing that's going to the prize pool. Not sure what what is going to the prize pool then specifically. Yeah, they didn't show any of that, but they did in 2016. Okay, well we have to go back to the announcement, the announcement around um, uh, the like the beginning of this worlds and how because I'm assuming that Riot put out an article basically announcing Kazakhs and how everything went. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm trying to find it right now. Maybe somebody will find it and share it in Discord. Um, Someone says the world's pass icon and base Kazakhs. Ah, uh, okay, that makes sense because I did buy the world's pass. Okay, twenty-five yeah. percent of the world's of the revenue for the world's pass will go to teams competing in the world championship tournament. Twelve point five percent of this will go to teams based on how they finish, while twelve point five percent will be evenly split among all of the competing teams. So. Yeah, it's it, you're right, and that it's very uh, confusing to me the way that they put it up on screen because or on the the article because it's like okay, well, are you saying that all twenty five percent got lumped into the prize pool, or is twelve percent of twelve point five just rev shared while the other twelve point five percent is sh- is like divvied out into the prize pool? It's kind of it's a little odd how they worded it. Yeah, well, it it's odd in wording, and it's it's a little odd to me as well. Like, I mean, I'm sure they have good good you know, research done on, on what they should be promoting and stuff. But it, it does feel weird to me that Kazakh skin, you know, only the base model goes into the world's prize pool and the rest goes directly to the teams. Like, why why Kazakhs? Why why this approach? Um, you know, these kinds of questions are, are all I'm thinking about. Like, you know, I, I don't have any numbers, so I don't know. But, like, it just, it just seems weird a little bit when, when you look at it. I wish in general that um, like 
you know how they do in LPL they do crazy stuff they have like these emotes above the nicknames of the players for when I think you can donate for them to make a, like when they make a play or it mm. has to do with something that fans yeah. can interact with I wow. really wish that we sounds... would do more of like everyone would do more of that I don't know of course legally how that kind of works and everything but uh, and also you know I don't want the screen to be full of that stuff yeah, yeah. at all times but there's definitely untapped potential yeah 100%. yeah I think just in general I, I think you know seeing the prize pool stay the same at roughly six million is not what you're hoping for um if the viewership is up a bunch for this year so mm-hmm. you know we don't may, maybe the teams who competed through this kazakh promotion actually took home more money um but if it wasn't reported that way it doesn't look good right so either yeah that's probably either, true either it wasn't reported or i would say i would say it with some big air quotes it wasn't reported well in air quotes or it actually doesn't look good and we didn't make as much money this year as we probably should have which i then either means that the approach this year which i thought was cool wasn't actually cool yeah <laughs> uh and didn't translate to dollars or or whoever whoever wrote this stuff up need probably needs a little bit more context the, the, i think um somebody in chat is pointing out that it's ash versus kazix so yeah maybe like ash is just a more, probably a more cha- popular champion owned by more people it's probably when you go to like a different ch- like type of champion it's it's less right, likely to raise as much there's there's yeah. so many questions right because like ash didn't have skins that you're buying against because like if i'm if i'm a normal person i have ten dollars i'm going to throw at this thing if i throw at it if i throw it at a tl skinned thing i'm not contributing to the regular prize pool then so where ash didn't have any competition that people were buying skins against it was just ash right well don't so, you get the base kazakh skin when you purchase a team do you skin? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you do. See, it's very. Uh, did you buy the Wait, Kazakh many, skin? Yeah, I bought. I bought the TL one. I bought okay. It. But how much did it cost relative? Because you could be undercutting the margins. Like these. These are the kinds of things I didn't, you know, sadly do enough research on. But like, if if you get it for free, but it's lumped in, you're you're undercutting the margins then to stop people from having to buy two, or do you have to buy both and it's at the same price? Um. So I guess what I'm saying here is like I don't know enough to know if this like what what is making this show up the way that it is. Okay. Abushu says in chat, how do you feel about LOL using a compendium like system that Dota uses? That's I'm basically sorry, what they I did this know. year, mm. and because you could you could buy the world's pass and then it would give you quests and challenges to complete, and then that would unlock like extra stuff for you in game. So I mean that that is actually kind of what they did, um, and it's interesting by the way that not too many people caught it. I think. Honestly, I kind of, in retrospect, I kind of feel like the system this year is a little confusing because there's like there's the pass plus there's Kazakhs plus there's, uh, there's like, yeah. It, how does the rev share work? It's it's just kind of an, an interesting system. Yeah, I mean, so like people are saying it's a chroma and you have to buy the base skin and then you pay extra for the chroma. Yeah. Um. So yeah. like, okay, but. Once again, to Travis's point, if it's this complicated, just be like, I want to buy something that contributes to the prize pool. It feels hard to do. And like you said, is, is Kazix the right champion for this? Like, are we properly getting the right value out of the, the vet viewership? And it doesn't it doesn't feel like it, I guess. But uh, let's let's we talked about the revenue side, but there's also the viewership side. Uh, honestly, like I feel like viewership feels pretty good for this year. I mean, we saw it go up a ton. Obviously, it's nice whenever you don't have a Korea Korea final. Um, and uh, quite frankly, this year's worlds went by pretty quick, uh, for finals, but, uh, it feels like, I don't know, overall, I feel like Riot can feel pretty happy about how this year's, uh, worlds went, especially because, you know, rumored less people playing the game, uh, you know, like if, if things were really so dire, you would see a pretty dramatic drop, but I don't really feel like that's what we're seeing here. Yeah, I think, think... oh, Oh, I was going to say, it's really awesome to talk to like even to talk to people who don't know what League of Legends is to say the World Finals graze 100 million viewers, uh, you know, on par with some of the major North American uh, sporting events. Like that's pretty huge news. Yeah, I it's it's big. It's good news. I hate that comparison because it's apples to apples to compare. Like a uh, you. <laughs> Isn't it apples to oranges? Yeah, apples to oranges. Apple. Because sorry, I got interrupted. Um, uh, an apple to oranges comparison, uh, because 
yeah, like they, it's it's domestic versus global, but yeah, yeah. I think I think viewership was really good. I think one of the things like they got lucky in a sense that the finals had a Chinese team in it. Um, I think also the meta was really good. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much. It's, it's hard to know how much that matters to other people. I see it on Reddit, but Reddit is much more competitively minded than the average fan. And obviously I am not a good representation of like the average viewer. Uh, uh, so I wonder how much the meta played into some of these, these boosted numbers or increased yeah. numbers as well. I think like also, I think if we look at the entire year, um, I of course have kind of unique perspective of what happened in EU and on the one side, we had kind of a lot of new elements on the broadcast and we switched things up, which kept it fresh, which I think is going to be very important going forward for uh, any broadcast, really. But we also had a really good year in terms of kind of storylines that er erupted naturally, right? Both domestically as in the World Championship and at MSI, you know, a new champion at MSI, no SKT, Korean teams knocked out, European and NA teams doing very well. Like, it, it was all crazy good um and i wonder if you take a lot of that away what it looks like yeah. and obviously china is the future um there's a huge viewer bases and fandom so yeah um all right well i'm just wondering if you have any final thoughts here uh call me proto before we move on uh no just wanted to thank everyone for having me on the sponsors alienware u.gg and mastercard Thank you. Uh, Mastercard, thing, not an official sponsor for this episode, but I'm, or you.gu, yeah. but I'm sure they will appreciate you. Your other content in yeah. your team. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Uh, no problem. Have a good day. Have a good one. All right. Nice. Moving on. Uh, after this next caller, I'm going to talk about something that's kind of cool that's happening. Um, let's see. Where are we? Uh, Mars Darks, 4 months, CB Moss 422, Trace B. Oh, yeah, they said shocks keep kicking ass in this male dominated industry. You're honestly so good at what you do. Thank you. Kermit Sudoku, seven months. Uh, welcome back, shocks. Hi, Kermit. Shoving Leopard, Bubba 9D, four months. Linoleum Bonaparte, which I, I That's really a like great nickname. Yeah, four months. What and about your weeps? Fulger Strike Reset for three months. Uh, Enable Poggers, Travis. Read, yeah. Why didn't you read that? I don't read that person's thing. Uh, Addy Sean. Addy Sean, is that how you say it? It's addition. Addition. Uh, addition. Addison. Addition. Where are you calling from? Yeah. Uh, Durham, New Hampshire. Okay. I just want everybody in the chat to know that he spells his name A D I, then S H A W N. It's a, it's a combination of my name I and went, my brother's name. So yeah. I went into the room. I said Addy Sean as well, and then instantly I was like, Oh, it's clearly addition. I started yeah. calling. Well, Travis has to. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, so you're calling from Michigan? Uh, no, Durham, New Hampshire. New Durham, New Hampshire. Okay. What would be nice for next episode is like making me tell you where all these things lie, like on the map, because I have no idea. <laughs> That'd be pretty good. Where? Uh, what do you want to talk about in the show edition? Uh, so I want to talk about what do you guys think about Cloud9 going to Korea boot camping, unlike other NA teams that are staying here, and then. How was, for Shock specifically, how was hosting your first CSGO major? I mean, not major. Uh, <laughs> it was definitely not a major, but yeah, thank you. And because I, I watched it, it was like, felt weird, but it was cool watching like a different host in that sense. Well, uh, let's talk about the Korea thing first. There's, uh, no, there's no LEC teams going to Korea quite yet, right, Shox? You know? I'm not sure. I think Vitality? I'm not sure. I know they usually do that. But since, you know, we have enough talent in our own region to practice with, we don't need... To... No, just kidding. I'm sure... They... I just don't know who's leaving. Mark, can you... You fix your... Your, your webcam. Your, literally, we can only see your hair. Okay, now that's... Now <laughs> safe for work. And now it's... Did you close? I think... I think he did. Okay, for a second, I thought you closed your laptop lid and then it just like shut your computer off. No, I think like, he crotch. like went in with the crotch. Okay, yes, that I didn't need you to. Thank you for spelling that out for everyone. Um, all right, Cloud9 going to Korea. I, I, I think it's nice that they're doing this. Okay, so one thing here that a lot of people should consider is burnout. Um, well, not just that, but if you want to start scrimming at this point in time, because a lot of North American teams are already scrimming, uh, I think Team Liquid started today, they were tweeting about it, which means obviously that they're scrimming somebody else. Um, but if you are importing a player, 
and you have to figure out their visa stuff, it might be hard for them to be in the country while you're doing that. So that is one reason why I could see certain teams going to other countries, because if you cannot bring the player to you, you can go to a player or you can meet up in another location. Uh, potentially that's what they're doing. Um, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, I think a lot of teams go to Korea at some point to boot camp. It's not that strange, but it is does feel earlier than mm. usual. Like, I like you know, the C9 guys literally left Vegas to go to Korea, which just feels almost I mean, too early. For, for uh, C9 in particular, it like their year, that was crazy. Like, yeah. the amount they played and practiced, and then they went so deep in Worlds, and then they had literally no off time, and now they're in Korea. I'm more worried about kind of what more and more players have said yeah. this year about, the, you know, the burnouts and, and the needing a break for yourself. Um, but, I, I mean, it, I think it's still good that people go to scrim in Korea and stuff like that, but... Uh, it, yeah, I disagree that it's a little too early. Oh. You disagree? I, I agree it's a little too early. Uh oh. <laughs> I, That's like, the complete opposite of what you just said. No, I. Whatever. I I dis I I do not think they should be going to Korea yet, uh, because I do worry about the burnout. Because uh, league is a marathon over the course of the year, and it is okay to be a little weak at the beginning of spring split. In fact, you don't even have to win spring split. You don't even have to make playoffs in spring split. So uh, getting yourself like giving the players some downtime and some chance to like rebuild participate in in scrims or whatever or like in houses or whatever i think that can be good c9 themselves just proved how important it is to just make worlds and do well there like yeah. they, they literally just proved it and then they're like yeah let's go bust our, our back and break our back again like i think it's it's pretty crazy i understand wanting to go to korea and i understand wanting to go a little bit early just because like you want to have readjustment period because i think the season starts january 18th so you probably want to be back a week so your sleep schedule think an a will... starts uh, maybe the later? twenty, I think it's like the twenty second or yeah, something. Yeah, a bit later. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. So, so we start the twenty second. So, yeah, you, maybe you leave the start of January for two weeks and come back the the fourteenth. So you have seven days to get ready. I can't, I can't see why going at the start of December is is necessary or good long term. Yeah, yeah I, think I think they like, need like weeks off, like weeks, like maybe even a month. That's. Th yeah. Sorry. No, go ahead. I sure. think. Yeah, I think Sneaky, like, for example, I think he's going back home right after Korea. They're going for, like, two weeks or something like that. That's what I remember hearing from him. So I think they get, they're get they getting a break after, before, like, they scrim again or something like along those lines. Yeah, but, I don't, it like, now you're in a What's world where point? you're flying. Like, international travel is pretty brutal. I think we can all agree. As oh, Wait, Mark, have you ever... Yeah. Travel? I... <laughs> I've traveled a lot, not as much for work, but like I've been to Italy, I've been okay, to okay. Australia and stuff. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't know because I realized, you know, you okay. Um, I'm worldly, Travis. Yeah, yeah, just not not through work. Yeah, um, fuck you. I think what's also weird is like when it's this early, the preseason's still kind of a mess, and so like you kind of question the value of the practice you're even getting like for a roster that's largely still the same with just a mid laner changed out and not really any big changes in coaching staff and the game is in in a uh, in flux i just i just don't really think it's worth it this early but who knows yeah i don't know okay so then the second question is shocks Hosting a CSGO major. Yeah, Congratulations so, on that honor. <laughs> let's be clear. <laughs> wow, uh, incredible. <laughs> I didn't notice this as well. This, it wasn't a major. It was more like uh, the event in Belgium, which also had a CSGO portion. And I was more. I was on stage, and I was on the Dutch stream. So I was speaking in my um, native language for the League of Legends part, which was really weird. But I don't think you could see too much online of uh, what I was doing. But it was cool. I mean, consciously, I will want to do more other games next year. But I do believe in studying up and being well prepared for it yeah. uh, and for me csgo would be kind of a good fit because I, it's the esport i watch the most next to league of legends i think i love it i think it's a great esport i think they have great talent i have, think they have great storylines and um, so i know a fair bit about it but to actually host it i would like study um but it was nice to do and at my toes and and i was pleasantly surprised at how positive people were uh, about it um you know people are like oh this is this is really cool where i thought they would be more like 
no, stay in league, yeah. you know? I don't know. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I thought- uh, maybe this is a good chance to just talk a little bit. Like, what are you... So, a lot of people are thinking that you are, like, leaving league. I know you said you're not. But, like, what what is next year going to look like for you? Um, well, the cool thing is that I don't really know. Okay. Um, but the only thing that I do know is that I'll still be doing you know, pending everything, of course, a lot of league or I have the desire to still do a lot of league. This is where I came from. This is what I love. This is what I know most about. I'm versed in. I love working um, with the broadcast. So that'll be there as a constant. But mainly, um, uh, the world is my oyster. I definitely want to do other titles. I would love to do CSGO events. Um, I just think it's awesome. And you have to say also for seven years, I've kind of been doing the same. And doing the broadcast and stuff and i also think it will be good for my development if i just go do other shows you know i yeah. did the esports awards i got to work with a completely different crew um uh, and i think it's going to be important in my development i want to stream more i want to possibly do youtube content as well i'll definitely stream more i couldn't up to this point because um i basically didn't have enough time in a year with all the traveling and you know we have to be in the office when we're not on the show most of the time and I also want a bit of a personal life yeah. but a big part of this decision is for me motivated by making my own schedule a bit more and yeah, like in the last years I've done every event for league all the time right so every time friends would be like oh our marriage our wedding is in in May I'd be like sorry that's MSI yeah uh, my birthday the birthdays of friends that are in September, October, or November, or any of the finals. It was always like, sorry, can't come, and all those things. You know, I just want to make some more time for peeps. Yeah. And earn that bread. No, <laughs> also. On the topic have you, have you had a picture of you in your new hoodie yet? What hoodie? The, the hoodie. <laughs> Don't. No? Okay. Uh, We're not allowed to talk about it. I that. gave myself a, a gift uh, of, like, for the step in my career. Shox has been earning that bread. No, I and, just... and spending oh, that bread. Went, um, not at all. You had to order my food. Like she, she bought a very expensive thing in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did Mark see? Oh, yeah. 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 No, it's... I didn't see. It. Well, did I see? I don't know. You just it's heard about Vegas. it. Everyone was talking about it. <laughs> no, Frodo. It was the top. It was the talk of Vegas. Oh, uh, I do remember. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Someone in chat is correct, but it's uh, really stupid. I got it out of my system. Uh, yeah. yeah. Did, did you do you actually want to stream? Because I feel like a lot of people say streaming and like, oh, it'd be fun. But like, it's a kind of a grind. And yeah. Well, Mark, I did really used weird. to stream uh, a lot, actually. I think yeah. people just don't remember because it was five years ago. But, yeah, but you also used to edit your own videos. I used to edit my own videos. So I, I have experience with all this and I remember loving it. But as you say... It's a freaking grind. And that's why I didn't stream when I was um, like in my contract with Riot as it was because I just felt like I couldn't deal with it because it's such a grind. For me, streaming is work because I'm not naturally gifted at any game that still exists at least. So I'm like trying to be good. I'm trying to read the chat. Her saying that I'm shit constantly. I'm trying to interact. I. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely going to be a grind, but I also feel like I would have a lot of fun. And I have a community that I would like to interact with more on a chiller basis you know that so more here's of me what you do you just go to irl <laughs> no i can't do that in europe yeah but... just chat yeah no no not irl streaming i mean oh. like i you just go to the, the just chatting category yeah and then you say um in, so what it, sub interviews i think is what it is and and people who sub get to be interviewed by you on on the stream that's a great and idea you'll get so many subs sorry addy we're like completely derailing no you're fine <laughs> yeah. uh yeah i don't know I, I think uh, the, the streaming thing is is harder to do than it's it's usually worth if you have other opportunities. Like yeah. If you. Well, all Travis is telling me how lucrative it is. So. Listen, yeah, watch wait. this. Watch. Ready? Somebody sent a Twitch Prime sub just to prove my point. It, I've been trying to explain to Shocks that it's pretty lucrative, and in a second, somebody's gonna sub send me a Twitch Prime sub, and it's gonna be glorious. 
Oh, Have shark's you looking sharks? There's, there, there's less of a glint in Travis's eyes as he's become a, a, a shill for the See? crowdfunding that is Twitch. Busy, Busy Bongo. Bongo and and Orbo. See, it's just it's so it's super spender and super turbo spender era. And turbo era. Oh body. my as gosh! He, as he asked for that, as he asked for that, like as the money came in, did you see portions of his soul leaving? Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's a, Every it's a crazy transaction. One one Twitch Prime sub equals one percent less soul. Um, I mean, and to be honest, like. I, I'm not this decision. Some people are like, oh, is this because you like want to earn more money or whatever? And I wouldn't say the, f I would say I was always treated very well at Riot and that's not what uh, motivated it. But it's just that I want to tap into different things. You know, I different revenue streams. Yeah, there's, I, well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, but like there's a lot of things and parts of me that you never see because it's only, you only see broadcast chalks. Yeah. And I mean, for people who follow me on Instagram at if you e e f j a h, that's so silly, but they wouldn't give me shocks, even though I sent them a picture of my passport. A story for another day. Um, they were like, it doesn't say shocks <laughs> anywhere on this passport. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. But like, I want to do more stuff also, you yeah. know, more content, different content. I want to show you sides of my life that you didn't even know were there yeah. and stuff, but, you know, not too much. Like, Yeah. <laughs> You're looking forward to getting free stuff and filming weird videos. Like it's I do. it. That's, that's what Mark and I do. All <laughs> our careers are just filming weird video, get free stuff. And quite frankly, <laughs> you know, let me put the Alienware logo up when I say this. Quite frankly, it's amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Uh, addition. Any final thoughts on the way out? Uh, oh, yeah. I just think it's cool because people like Smix, for example, who we're known for like a st hosting StarCraft, who also transitioned to Counter-Strike, is like, it's cool to see other people like branching out from like Shox's. And then one quick question. So there was this thing on Reddit where who he, I was in his stream, had a really bad like solo queue game. And then Tyler one was uh, unfortunately in that game. The whole thing on him fl flaming who he, and then like, what the worst part was just his chat started coming to who he's chat and like started like the who he and everything like that i saw like it really like put him down a little bit so i was just wondering like i haven't seen i know him. you guys saw him at all stars and everything like is that kind of like you know spreading so so addition this is question number three that you're trying to slip into uh yeah, i would say I know your name is Addition, so it makes sense that you're trying to get additional questions in. But um, I, I, I'm not familiar enough with the, the situation you're describing. I'm sure it doesn't surprise me that Tyler One would have toxic viewers. Uh, but I enjoyed my interactions with him. He, didn't, he seems yeah. like a nice guy in person. I would, yeah, I would say like I get people. There's of course this amount of people that are like, why is Riot inviting someone who had this history and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I understand that in a way, but I also think he's a huge part of the community and he has made strides and stuff like that. But yeah, um, yeah I haven't seen the instance you're talking about. Um, yeah. yeah. Addition. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's on Reddit, but yeah, thanks for everything, yeah, Travis yeah. and Shocks. My and addition. Mark. Yeah, fucking right, me too. <laughs> here. Right, thanks, addition. Have yeah, a good no, one. Mark's the best. Bye. See Have a good one. Uh, okay, Mark, Tyler, before you pull the next person, I want to talk about something. Okay. What were you going to say, though? I was just going to say Tyler yelled at me at, on the TCS because we were saying his card this was bad. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe he's not such a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He also said everything. Like, he constantly said that I'm from Europe, so that's bad. On air. Really? Damn. Yeah, it was, it was so a joke. harsh. So, what were you going to say, Travis? Uh, so I want to tease something. So this, there's... Something that's real, like it's kind of soft announced right now, but I think it's getting heavily announced tomorrow. Um, and I do not think I will get in that much trouble for talking about it on the show tonight. So I'm okay. going to talk about it. Um, so, is, oh. is it a public trailer? Uh, Travis, well, there, yeah, the rule breaker. Yeah, is uh, it a public trailer? Well, yes, I it's on it's on a web page, but like the league stuff hasn't really been talked about as part of it. Ah. Uh, but XSplit is uh, driving crazy right now, so maybe I'm, it's I'm giving you a sign that you shouldn't talk about it. Um, no, no, no. I've just I'm committed now. Um, so Netflix uh, is doing what is happening? How did you do that? Oh, I know what you're talking about now. So I don't know what XSplit is doing right now. It's having a heart attack. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh! Hang on. Well, this is this is cool, dude. I like how it's slowly loading in only portions of it. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand what's happening. Uh, let me... You can it. insert an HTML source, and yes. then it shows the website? Yes. 
Wow. Yes. Oh, now we got a, a takeover ad. Vogue is just an amazing website. Just, just, just do a, just do a window capture. Dude. There's like five ads loading. This is yeah. Uh, this is why I don't even stream and I know that. Yeah. I, don't I know just how want. It works, but just do a window capture. I just want to say that Vogue is one of the reasons why my ad block rates are so high, and I don't make any money on YouTube or from ads on Twitch. Okay. Oh, Instead oh. of going to their website. They're now forcing me to go to this unlisted YouTube video that's on their article. Let's see if this works. Um, either way. Oh, ne- it's unlisted. <laughs> yes. Is that a mistake? Uh, it links am I going to mute here and watch on the stream? Probably. For seven days. So, um, so Netflix has created a series called Seven Days Out that will debut, I believe it's the 21st. Uh, yeah, ne- December 21st. Um, it is made from two of the executive producers worked on uh, Chef's Table. And the idea for the series is that uh, it, they, it's seven days before a major event, um, six iconic events. So Kentucky Derby is one of them. Uh, there's a, I think, oh, well, yeah, the uh, dog show is one of them. And one of them is the League of Legends Championship Series finals in spring in Miami. Uh, and what is super fascinating about this is, um, so the day, this is going to get kind of weird, but the day that I found out about, uh, the whole thing that went down with Peter's family was the day that they started filming, um, because it was about seven days before spring finals were going to happen. And so they kind of documented, uh, the whole story leading up to the spring finals. Um, and they have interviews from me and Peter and a bunch of people at that time that were interviewed. Um, and so like the tagline, I think for that episode is like, can a team overcome uh, a tragedy before uh, their championship in seven days? And so uh, from talking to the executive producer at the time, or the executive producer, one of the guys on it, um, and sort of talking to their team, I think that they are really talented individuals that are going to tell the story in a super impressive way. Um, uh, that we're not getting paid, by the way, for this. There's not, it's not, they didn't buy any ad time on it. Um, I'm moderating, so they're doing a private showing slash premiere of this episode tomorrow at NALCS Studios. Um, Wait, am I invited? Yeah, I invited you. Oh, what time? Wait, Se- way seven. to ruin this like very important. Thing. Yeah, sorry. It's okay. We'll talk. We'll follow up afterwards. But they're doing a private um, viewing and sort of premiere of this episode tomorrow at NALCS Studios. In full context, afterwards, I'm hosting a moderated. I'm moderating a panel with the with one of the guys from Riot, uh, some of the team owners, and um, the, uh, Andrew, who's the the executive producer on the show. Um, either way, uh, I, I just am really excited for this. I think it's going to be amazing. Um, I know that Netflix has done other stuff on League. They had like really incredible access. They interviewed a ton of people. They so were just filming to be all clear, over the place. It's about um, like this happened, so it, they like, so it's they so did, but it's not the main. It's not. So they did not. So they were going to do seven days out. Like they had talked to Riot and planned like. Okay, we're doing all these iconic things. There's like a NASA launch, I think, is one of them, or, or landing. And so they're like, well, let's do something in esports. They talked to Riot, and they're like, seven days before Miami finals, uh, spring finals. And so they um, they started filming seven days out, and this thing happened, like, the week before. Um, and so it just ended up being part of it. And so what I've heard is that it's one of the major story arcs in the series. But it'll touch on, you know, Riot seven days out before their major event, um, you know, for instance, at All Stars, they put out their schedule for the whole show seven days out. So it'll be super fascinating to find out what it's like for Riot seven days out from an event because I'm sure there's a lot of things left unplanned. It's my little dag. It's my, you know, getting getting at Riot. Anyway, um, you're gonna throw that one in when you're hosting tomorrow. So yeah, maybe. Um, but my whole point is, uh, uh, I I'm just super excited for this. There's a I think that the there's like a t- episode tease or something that's coming out. There's gonna be a bunch of stuff that Riot's gonna talk about about this tomorrow, so you guys can keep your uh, ears to the ground for you it. Know but when it's gonna be it's um, it's uh, what's that? Uh, people are asking when they can watch it. 
Um, it's yeah. So November twenty first is the day that the series releases on Netflix. Uh, but I'm sure you'll hear about it before. What? November twenty first. December December twenty first. Oh. December twenty first is the day that it'll it'll be out. I hope uh, I can watch yeah. it too. So uh, go check it out. Um, it's gonna be good. I'm excited for it. You'll see pictures of people uh, from the premiere tomorrow. Uh, and all that news will be hitting tomorrow. So I just wanted to let you guys know this. This is my little special tease that I give you guys. People who watch Hotline League get to find it about it early. You so. think you'll get in trouble? Um, you think I care about getting in trouble? I own a giant company now. <laughs> all right? Travis Gafford Industries still not actually incorporated. What is Riot and it. Netflix going to do to me? <laughs> I'll put my legal team on them. Yeah, yes, exactly. Kobe's right next door. He he knows a lot about the law. He'll handle it for me. Um, yeah. All right. Anyway, yeah, uh, let's move on. How fast is it out? What did you say, Mark? I have follow questions about the the premiere tomorrow. Can I ask them to you after the show? Yeah. Or you yes. can call into Hotline League uh, yeah, yeah. and put your topic in. Do the you want to bring the, uh, the girl? Who? Oh your, yeah. Your yeah, girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just my talking, he's like i was gonna ask josh i'd love to have josh there but i guess you oh, can come right. too. I thought you meant there was someone in the waiting room who was the girl you wanted me to pull i was confused no no no, no. yeah 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 those kinds of questions like okay. what do i need to wear is it an actual like premiere or can i show up in joggers like a shithead you can show up in a tao sitters um sitters a- yeah all right uh well yeah we'll talk about it afterwards okay we got a we got a caller. Oh, he went off to grab him. Okay. Anyway, looking forward to that stuff tomorrow. Um, Busy Bongo, thank you for the Twitch Prime. Oribo, thank you for the Prime. Super Spender, thank you for the Prime. Turbo Aram, thank you for the Prime. Hawk with a nine. Can I? Two months. Give some random info. The protagonist subbed and Z yes. Pringle thirteen. Yeah. What's your random, random info? So if you're into following like novelty accounts or funny accounts. She, I've heard her tell the story four times. So there is an account called, uh, well, you can find it if you do Roller Coaster Tycoon, and it's called RCT Guests. And all they tweet is, guest 1067 is satisfied. Guest 81 thinks that the litter here is really bad. Guest 1323 needs to use the bathroom. Guest 145 thinks Travis smells. Wait, none, no, that's... None, of, none of these people are as old as this. They're not going to understand wait, the reference. You guys have played Laurel, ro- what? Roller Coaster <laughs> Roller coaster, roller coaster tycoon. Roller coaster tycoon. <laughs> See, they're all putting question marks. Um, they don't understand. What? Wait. Guest fourteen thirty eight has died. Yeah, that person's I mean, just repeating it because they think it's nice. So. Yes, uh, we did. You old fuck. Wait, but they're also old because they played yeah. it. Mark, did you yeah, play roller yes, coaster tycoon? Yes, I played a lot of roller coaster tycoon. And I would Is that? In a park, and I would build the big, like a giant one that shot a back, shot back a roller coaster at him. Get away from the microphone. Listen, lady. Guess 1700 has had to go to the bathroom. Please don't. They're gonna, I don't want the number one clip on my stream to be you whispering seductively about the bathroom. It wasn't that seductive. It was kind of getting compressed. Uh-huh. <laughs> Devin has joined the show. Devin, where Maybe are you calling from? Maybe I should from? stream Roller Coaster Tycoon only. De- Devin, where are you calling from? Uh, what's up, Travis? Long time to see you. Jersey. Wow. Jersey. Okay. That's a great voice yeah. you have, sir. Yeah. Thank, you, thank you. This uh, this lovely gentleman uh, met me through Hotline League and then carried me in World of Warcraft for a couple months. Um, a long time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. D- and he's no longer a sub, unfortunately. So I, Ooh. you know, I guess the friendship's I, over. 20, Devin, it says right here, December twenty seventh. Travis, it's coming your way. Okay, Devin, Is what this do you? New Jersey or just another Jersey? It's, it's New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. There's only in Jersey, Jersey, dude. Did you? Someone called from New Jersey last time as well. Can we ask him, what, <laughs> Devin? Uh, what do you want to talk about on the show uh, today? <laughs> All right. So I got a um, I got a TSM topic for you, Travis. Sure. Um, Thank you. This is the only reason we do the show. Absolutely. I figured. Uh, full disclosure, though, I am uh, I'm not a TSM fan. Uh, I'm an NA fan. Yeah, I'm that's really what everybody else says before they root for a that- TSM. Oh no! I think they so so. My my topic is like I, I want to see NA teams build rosters to go deep into international events, and I think TSM here falls uh, falls super short. Um, oh. Yeah. No. Yeah. I I'm not a fan at all. So um, 
I think for one, I think so. My premise on that is I think uh, breaking up Sven and Mithy was absolutely the wrong decision, um, with without a doubt. Um, and then I think all the rest of the moves they made um, currently have actually made them weaker than they were last season. Um, and then I also have some, you know, what I think that they they should have done, um, with obviously you know hindsight. Yeah, just what do you uh, think? Uh, well, let's break it down. We don't need to talk yeah. about this Sven and Mithy mistake because the proof is in the pudding. What? Um, yeah. What? Uh, why do you not like this roster? Well, so I mean, it's it, it it's hinges off the backbone of um, I think breaking up Sven and Mithy was stupid, given the fact that the meta change um, in bot lane pretty big, TSM shot calling sucks, uh, jungle situation was an absolute disaster, and Hunter had his worst season in God knows how long. I think all those things caused losses, and the losses is kind of what forced Reggie's hand into acting. And then ultimately, I think his like knee jerk decision was well, Mithy was underperforming, so let's kind of drop him. But I think that was the wrong decision. Um, and really what I think, so if I'm getting into it, what I think that they should have done actually is kept the bottom three of the map, which was obviously Bjergsen and Sven Miffy. And this is, this, is, this is a spicy one for you, but I actually think what they should have done is made the move to get Dardock and Hooney. Or, um, you can't. excuse me, not, not Dar oh, wait, 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 excuse me, um, not, um, not Hooney. Dardock and Hooney, not Hooney, yeah, so, um, I wanted to see, um, uh, then pick up Dardock and then uh, maybe pick up somebody like a uh, like a, a new talent like like Viper or something. Honestly, I think that that would have been like just keep it in NA. But I, I think splitting up Sven and Mithy is ultimately going to cause them to have um, all sorts of, of problems. I don't think that you can break up that pedigree and break up that um, synergy. Basically, shocks. As someone who watched Sven and Mithy for years before. How entwined are they? Are they capable of li living without the other one there in bed next to them? Yeah, of course, but they were, um, you know, there was famously, I think it was that they didn't want to split up beforehand. So they were still together after they left G2. Um, but I also think that's a very hard thing to maintain, knowing that people have different evolution arcs and like the way their career goes and their their skill and whatever um i don't particularly think mitty had the best year i also don't think that should be a death sentence for his career whatsoever i'm very excited to see him play again i don't dislike the choices they made with this roster i have to say um i really love the fact that they have broken blade and that you know they're trying something that's a bit more out of the ordinary for them you know someone from the tcl who's this up-and-coming starter who they can develop and whatnot and they're sticking with some choices that they've made in sven of course in bjergsen and in the jungle as far as we know yeah um so yeah um i don't know i think it's a defendable decision about mithy for sure yeah. why, why do you think they shouldn't have gotten or why do you think they shouldn't have let mithy go Devin? So I really, I really don't think that, um, and by the way, Twitch chat, I know, I know I'm, I'm not necessarily Viper, but I think you get a, a sol one of the more solid NA top laners. Um, but I don't think you break up Sven and Mithy just because of the fact that this is, again, this is, um, a proven pedigree. I mean, they're, they're like two of like, they're like a larger than life duo for the most part. Um, and they have a proven track re record of winning internationally and, and doing really really well and i think that what caused mithy to not look good didn't have so much to do as mithy's personal problems as much as tsm's issues that they've been having for you know however long now Does that makes sense I, I this is i think we took a call like this before like i don't think that they've had long-term issues beyond this year right like they won the championship half the time and they appeared in it every single time so i i, I don't agree that there's long-term issues but i also like don't think Dardock and Viper gets you back over the top into into the finals, and it's this weird amalgamation of three old dudes and one young guy. And, and like Dardock's not that young anymore; he's been in the league for three years, going on his fourth, right? 16, 17, 18, and this will be 19. So like, I think it's it's a pretty weird mi mix of like, you're probably not going to win now, but you have a lot of talent that doesn't have a chance, like. I just don't see what that roster accomplishes. I don't think it's good enough to get over the top. I mean, do you think where they're at right now with how they position themselves that they're a top three team? No, but I think they're closer than they were with your moves. I think, like, I don't think Dardock would... Like, Dardock's a, a huge, like, vol volatility thing. He's a risk. <clears throat> He's a huge risk, and he is as far from a culture fit as you can get from TSM from everything we hear about both Dardock and TSM. 
So, like, there's a reason they didn't pick him up. They don't believe that he's a culture fit. This is not speculation. They've said it. So, like, I don't see a, a world where that roster works. Right. I mean, my so my 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 defense my defensive dart. I mean, there's no doubt. Like, he's kind of you know done done what he's done. Right. The like the the solace in him is that it seems that when he's around people that have really good not only talent but work ethic he seems to do better um you know obviously i know that the way he plays the game might not be synonymous with how tsm wants to do it especially the way they um with you know bjergsen and the resources that he uh tends to require but i still think that um i i still think even a bad culture fit is better than is, is better than greg honestly and I, I don't know like what are your thoughts on that i I don't think Dardock on TSM would work ever, or like without changes to to Dardock or TSM culture. But like this year, it would not have worked. Um, and so like you're asking me between a situation I don't believe in and a situation I think might be workable. Sure, like I I, I don't understand. I can understand the point about not breaking up Sven and Mithy maybe, but they were not very impressive and they're taking up import slots and like. Broken Blades, a potential young, fresh blood. Smoothie's still, I think it's also his third, fourth year in the league as well. So he's, he's starting to like, get up there a little bit. Greg's been around for a long time. So like you have one young guy and, and four relatively experienced guys, but you're better suited for the future than like Mithy, I think. So I don't know. I think this is a, a bit of an experiment. I don't, I don't have them in my top four, top three right now. I think I had them at fourth. So like I'm not saying that this is a top three roster either. I think it's, I think it's better than than your solution. And I can see, you know, at some point Sven and Mithy are going to break up. And if the breakup is the right time for it, and you get to ride the right time for that breakup, then maybe this is the right move, right? Like I don't think that they're going to retire together. So at some point you're going to break it up. I think this is a a fine time to do it if you're a TSM. No, yeah, I definitely. Um... I, I definitely agree. It just def it just feels strange to you know have, be you talking about TSM and not even have them in the top three, which is I guess kind of the reason why um, you know being an NA fan, I'm like, oh, you know, this is a little uh, underwhelming, I suppose, um, because I, you know I think nobody really wanted to see Greg stay. Um, Broken Blade looks great, but like I said, a big part of my argument, of course, hinged off of um, I really did like the Sven and Mithy idea. I think it could have worked, and I think getting rid of him after after one um, year was a little was what a I, major. Does it? What I will definitely agree with you on is that TSM's roster is the least exciting roster they have assembled. It uh, their least assemb uh, exciting roster they've assembled in years. Um, and like, if you think I've said this a little sure. bit in the past, so apologies if anybody's heard me say it. But like, if if you think about the beginning of every other season with TSM for all these past years, you're like, this is going to be exciting. What? Kobe says Kobe you're not said, you're not excited yeah. for Broken Blade from I the mean, other 2017 one? wasn't hype either. To be fair, they got Turtle instead of Double Lift as the only change. Right. Yeah, but they, right. it was the continuation of a roster of a roster people thought could be really good. Yeah, I think I'm yeah. cutting out. I don't know why I'm cutting out. Um, but it was a continuation of a roster people thought could be really good. Like people were excited about that roster going into 2017, even if. It hadn't performed as well the year before. Um, I mean, and I say that knowing, s saying that, like, people knew that Double Lift was going to be back. I know that, like, Wild Turtle was coming in, but people were still excited about, like, what that roster could could do this world. So I, I agree on that point. I guess what I'd, I'd say to Devin to, to close this out is just I, I, I agree that, like, none of these rosters sound super hype, like Travis is saying. But having all your import slots tied up on a bot lane that like didn't have a great year is super restrictive in terms of your team building. And like your proposed solution, which I, I didn't really like, was like still one of the best things you can propose because you have you have to work with imported uh, um, native players. And and it's just hard to find a good NA jungler who's not already locked up on a team and a good top laner. So that's I think that's one of the main reasons. Not because I think that they were pinning all their problems on on Mithy, but like if you think Mithy was a bit of a problem and he's taking up an import slot, you, you need to start moving things around. Yeah. No, absolutely. Makes sense to me. Hey, thanks, Evan. Do you have any final thoughts on the way out? Anything you nope. want to show? Um, no, just wanted to just want to say thank you to uh, to Mark, 
Shocks, Travis, as always, man. Love it. And uh, go Alienware, right? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Bye, thank you. <laughs> Have a good one. All right. Take care. See you. Can we please turn down the microphone? I'm. It's just, I don't understand why it gets louder and quieter. Um, someone, someone disappeared from the call. I saw that, yeah. Well, we, I mean, we're running out of time, so hopefully that person unmutes themselves. Hopefully they're alive. So, waiting room. so while Mark is gone, I want to mention... Uh, before I go, Labu Dab Mike is muted in the waiting room. So if you're still watching the stream, bud, I'm coming for you. Yeah. Um, all right. So I got something cool. Or something interesting. I'm saying less shocks and more Travis. I haven't two, talked in a minute. Two weeks ago, Hotline League, we announced uh, that Brother and I were going to be doing an unboxing, package opening stream or whatever before uh, the holidays hit. If you guys wanted to send anything. I got like a peel box for the first time. If you guys want to send crazy stuff, if you want to send interesting stuff, whatever. You can actually send me stuff. We're doing exclamation mark peel box in the chat. And I want to show you guys. I went there for the very first time today. Uh, to sort of see what was there and what what I'd be opening, you know? I'm like, am I going to need, like, a cart or something to carry this stuff out? And, man, did you guys surprise me. So I'm going to show you what I got. Ready? I'm covering the, uh, the address. Um, so this, this is what I got. So I got a nice little letter. This is what we're going to open so far. Uh, if anybody else wants to send anything else, uh, they can. But right now I've got what looks like a Christmas card from a person named Trevor. So, uh, so if you want to, um, if you wanted to do that, you can send me something, uh, cause right now the stream is going to be pretty short. It's okay. Broden asked me, what if nobody sends us anything? I think it'll be really funny, uh, if this is the only thing I'm opening. So we'll see. <laughs> uh, but yes, go ahead. If you, if you want to know how to send us something, you can do exclamation mark PO box and chat. Um, and we'll open it on stream. Um, is Mark back? Mark is yeah, back. Hello, Labuda Mike. What Labuda. are your two monitors doing? What do you What do you do? Like, how do you, do you don't have Discord open? You're on one of the monitors over here, and then I've got XSplit and the stream, and the Twitch. I La love this monitor. Labuda Mike, it's an Alienware monitor. Labuda Mike, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Illinois. Illinois, very good. And what do you want to talk about on the show tonight? <laughs> So I want to talk about Dardock, but just I so since you guys already talked about Dardock not going to TSM, uh, I pretty much want to talk about the optic move and like what do you guys think of Medios and Dardock? I think both are a uh, liability, and so you are hedging your bets by having both of them because if both of them have a fifty percent chance of succeeding on your roster and you have uh, two of them, you're you're setting yourself up for having a backup plan, or at least one of them working out. Do you think Meteos is a liability? A little bit. That, that a little man. bit, because I don't think... Uh, so I love I love Will Hartman. He's a wonderful man. But I think he has a very unique, uh, you know, approach to competitive League of Legends, which is he wants to have a good time and play on a team with friends. And if Optic this year is the way that Optic was last year... Medios might not be putting in 110% if the team's not doing well or the vibe isn't that good or whatever. And so I think that's why you get Dardock. Because guess, here, actually, here's the best way to put it. If Optic gets a beautiful, pristine environment, hey, great, let's keep Medios around. If Optic environment becomes toxic, well, you got the toxic guy right there. He's the guy to, that will just embrace that that the evil negativity uh and carry you he, you know he thrives on it right like the team starts to fall apart everybody's screaming at each other great that just powers them up all right shocks as someone not from na who i don't know if what the outside world opinion is on dardock because he's a huge lightning rod in north america despite never making it to international competition so what what is your foreign opinion on him I have to say that I um, I haven't followed everything as closely as you guys have. I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, the gist of it is rumored to be not the best personality on a team. He's like a he's Doesn't like a less a video you can watch if you're confused. He's like a less <laughs> malicious forgiven, you know, and that yeah. Whoa. 
Same and so true. is the is the opinion that he Are is... you offended for Darduk or for Forgiven, Mark? I might be offended on Forgiven's behalf right now. I don't know. <laughs> Um, so, and is the opinion that he's at a skill level where he actually should be on a major team, despite his issues? Yeah, I mean, that's basically the, the decision. He's been, he's been on like five teams, six teams in four years. Yeah, so he, oh, well, the question, she's asking, do we think, uh, he's really good? Like, yeah, he could be I, on a top team if uh, he is. Are you asking for sure. my opinion? Or I yeah, what's asking... your opinion? Oh, well, my opinion is he's not worth the, the risk unless you're intentionally but taking like skill-wise, do you think he's really good? Yeah, I think he's super good. Mm. But I don't think that matters. The risk is not worth taking. Um, I think, you know, in I general... Would think a team, if, um... I would say this. A team with any legitimate potential should not take Dardock. And you should use him as like a coin flip to make a, a mediocre team potentially really good. Mm. I'm not informed enough on the matter to know, but like in general, if he's if people are on so many teams all the time, where there's smoke, there's usually a bit of fire. So it's all about. Oh, yeah. there's no doubt that he's toxic. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, I'm trying I'm to be still... careful because I'm not entirely sure. So. Well, so that, that's that's probably. I think what's fair to say is Dardock doesn't even register to people across the seas. No. He's just not not considered because he never makes it makes it to international competition, right? Yeah. Okay, I think that's that's fair to say. Is there not enough jungle talent in any? Listen, we've got talent There's coming out. Talent. No, no, I, this is not, I'm not trying, this is an honest question. I don't know. You know, I, I'm agreeing. I, I say there's not enough talent for many, many roles. Um, jungle is a hard one. I think there's, there's, it's one of the better positions in North America, mm. which is n still not great. Marksman is probably the best and jungle might be second. And then maybe support, then top, then mid. I don't know. Mark, wouldn't you say that Dardog did a pretty good job of showing, showing like he's had, like been a little bit reformed? Um, since his uh, I don't know. I haven't seen any evidence that he's reformed. I mean, Echo Fox didn't want to keep him around. What? I, did you cut out, Travis? I didn't. Sorry, I was saying I haven't seen any evidence that he's reformed. I mean, Echo Fox didn't want to even keep him around. Well, who knows what that was? Because they're in jettison money plan. But I got to imagine Dardock was cheap because no, the, he said in a couple interviews that like Echo Fox was like one of his last chances that like no one else was, was taking a pass on him. So yeah. I can't imagine he was very expensive. So so maybe you're right. I don't know. But uh, and I doubt that Eddie could trade him for a lot of money, <laughs> right? Yeah, I don't think many people were in, were super in the market yeah. for him. I mean, I think literally, he went to a team that already has a jungler. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't think, I don't know if he's reformed or not. I don't think there was very clear options either way. I mean, Echo Fox's roster was a complete debacle over the course of the year. Um, right. And who knows why exactly. So this, they had a really, it wasn't like him and five dudes like for a year tried their best. And at the end of the year, we're like, damn, dude, we did our best and it didn't work out. It was like. They had a ton of roster moves. They completely fell apart by the end of the year. Where like they were, they got slammed by C9 after slamming Clutch, and like I don't know, it was, it was super weird. So like it's it's hard for me to say, you know. Yeah, I think he's a great pickup for Optic. I actually just think it's perfect for that. Like that's the team for him. I think that or Clutch because Clutch is going for the super toxic like or the, with the Huni and the, the Piglet. So like the fact that they didn't take Dardock on that deal and they preferred Lyra, I think says a lot. Here's what you do. Huni could have Huni could have vouched for him there, right? Like, Clutch Gaming was picking people up from Echo Fox to like build this kind of like boomer bust team. I mean, Seb Park was on here calling it very high high variability or something yeah. two weeks ago. So like, if you wanted a high variable player, they could have taken Dardock and they didn't. Yeah, I think uh, the the play for Clutch would have been that it's like, look, we haven't done any content. Let's get Piglet. Dardock, Hootie on our team, <laughs> and create Breaking Point 2, baby. Oh Let's go. Yeah, that would have been sick. Um, Libidu, Mike, do you have any other thoughts here? Uh, not really. Thank you very much for having me on, guys. Yeah, thanks, have a good one. Yeah, thanks. Um, Everyone's so nice. Yeah, they are. That's it's shocking. Uh, you look at Twitch chat, you look at Reddit, and you think... There's a bunch of what is going on? there's a bunch of dicks in this community, but then they come on the show and they're all too afraid to be toxic. 
I mean, it is that way with many, like, I don't know, this is kind of like not in real life, but it's more close than just writing a comment because mm -hmm. a lot of the people I meet in real life, you're not going to tell me that of all the people that you and me, I have some extra for you, which you ordered with your money, but um, out of all the people we have all met offline, like in real life, 10% mm -hmm. of those have written toxic, nasty things to us or any of us before, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Travis, did you did you did I talk to you about this? What I saw in one of the comments in like the FlyQuest Duo King announcement. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think that's. Yeah, we did talk about that, but I don't think that's. I think somebody misread it. You like? So I don't want to. Some, somebody what? You cut out. I think somebody misunderstood it, so I don't want to get into it. You suck, Travis. Oh man. Basically, we we've had one troll our entire time on this show. One yeah. real troll. Really? That's really impressive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. is he saying you suck because he's trying to prove a point about? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. So before we wrap up the show, I want to say if you stick around, I will be gifting subs after the stream, and I will be debuting a. I will let you guys choose which interview to show on stream. I will show you guys one that I haven't done before because I'm going to do a bounty. It'll take five minutes. So stick around five minutes after the stream is done, and uh, you'll get to see an, uh, an interview that nobody's seen before, and also a, and you guys can choose, and also a sub. Um, uh, Mark, you want to wrap this up? Any thoughts? Anything out there? I'm really looking forward to the premiere tomorrow. <laughs> that you just found out about. That I just I just found out about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, great. Any, there's just nothing you want to promote. Anything's going on? I'm probably gonna tweet a funny picture tonight or tomorrow. If people want to follow my Twitter to see when that comes out, it's it'll be like worth a, a chuckle and maybe a heart, but not don't expect to really laugh. That's great. Um, Socks, do you have anything you want to promote? What's your stream? Yeah, twitch.tv slash <laughs> vaping that before. Twitch that's so funny. Uh, twitch.tv slash shocks. That's me. Um, I think they're if they're fans of you. There's probably people, a couple of people who are like legacy fans who've been hanging around that stream since it was still active. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, and, okay, tentative binding agreement next week. Stream, be there or be square. Tentative binding agreement? Oh, no. So, shocks. Oh, you have 120,000 Twitch followers. I have like 48. Yeah, but none of those are subscribers. No, but the follow like when you turn on look, people are already talking in this chat. We pulled it up and they're already talking. They've been probably talking in this chat for years. <laughs> if you go to your channel, people are all Twitch talking in the chat. Slash shocks activated that meme. Yeah, holy crap! I can't believe you have a, you have three times as many followers and you don't even stream on Twitch. That's so depressing. It's from for then. Me. It's from back then. I am. Uh, it, it puts you. It puts you in your place, Travis. That you are a small fish. Yeah, a even fish. a woman who has not streamed for years. But I streamed a lot then. Like people think that I. <clears throat> I'm sometimes confused that well actually no it's normal but look at that picture yeah, yeah, like, it's, it's super small you, could you cut that and put it on no there's it's too small no but you could blow it up no i can't i can't blow i'm Can trying leave? it's not gonna work okay so you're in a stream what else well that's i think that's the most pressing thing i'm gonna stream okay. are, are, and also what? um follow travis and stuff yeah follow travis and stuff um uh, Shocks and I, I don't know. Do you, do you I still have, have more time? total viewers. Do you still have time tomorrow for Brendan to film a thing with us? Maybe. I'm going to lunch. Okay, after lunch? Maybe. I definitely want to film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay, the thing. Cause it's just because I hadn't slept last night, so today I was feeling. So, um, so, so tomorrow, Shocks and I are going to be filming uh, some content. Uh, I think the plan is to film a video where I interview her for a while, some long form interview content. And then she will interview me. I want to um, do something funnier, though. Maybe we should do, like, ask for viewer questions. I can tweet it out, and we can do that instead. You guys should ask for really, really salacious questions. <laughs> and then whenever you don't want to answer them, you have to plead the fifth, and the other person gets to, like, slap you or something. I don't know. Bam. There that actually go. sounds good. Or, ooh. I know this, this is very short notice. I, I think this is how actual YouTubers do it. They're like, oh, my God, we need content. Uh, let's. Yeah, no. So anyway, I'll be creating some content with Shocks tomorrow. That'll show up. I still have... I'll tweet salacious questions if you need I them. I think... I'll, don't tweet salacious questions, please. That's like the worst idea. You do not want to encourage people to tweet salacious questions to Shocks. That is like... Well, I like said to you. The worst idea ever. You both uh, get asked this question. Um, 
And uh, yeah, we're do it if you if you want enter the giveaway exclamation mark giveaway. We're giving away some stuff. If you're watching the YouTube uh, video, uh, you can do that. Uh, if you do exclamation mark P.O. Box or check the description, you can send me stuff. I've gotten one card so far, which I will open uh, the week before Christmas. So if anybody wants to send anything for me and Broden to open, he doesn't even have anything. So if you send him something, at least he'll have something to open. Um, and uh, I think that is it. Check out the all the – keep an eye out tomorrow for all the Netflix stuff that's going to come out. It's going to be cool. Um, and uh, that is Hotline League. Episode 15.